welcome. In this video session, I want to teach you about geographic coordinate system, which is basically longitude and latitude. And latitude is the angle north or south of the equator. And the easiest way to remember it is latitude analogous to ladder. So as we go up and down, we're going up the ladder. And longitude is east or west of the prime meridian, which is zero degrees, and it goes from the North Pole to the South Pole, passing through Greenwich, England. So in general, Alaska has a negative longitude because it's west of the prime meridian, except if you get way to the tip of the Aleutian Islands, then we cross uh, 180 and actually have an eastern longitude. Okay, and we'll also be using the term parallels and meridians. And parallels are basically east-west lines, and they're going to be parallel to each other. As opposed to meridians, they'll all converge at the north or south pole. So as an example, we'll make some parallels and meridians around Alaska. Okay, so if you go in a web browser, go to the data folder for the NRM338 class, and here's a geodatabase that has basically border of Alaska. So if you download that geodatabase, so save link as, then we can use that in this exercise. Okay, so here is the state of Alaska in longitude and latitude. And if you use the pointer tool, you can point to locations and down at the lower right-hand corner of the panel, it will show you the longitude and latitude for that location. So for example, here in the Aleutian Islands, we're at negative 177 degrees longitude and about 51.8 degrees latitude. Here, right along the Arctic coastline and the border of Canada, we're at negative 141 degrees longitude and 69.78 degrees latitude. Okay, so we're going to use this tool called Create Fishnet. So I search for that tool using the search window. And this tool allows you to create a fishnet of rectangular cells that are actually polygons. So what we'll do is make these polygons uh, squares that are 10 degrees wide and 10 degrees high. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is specify where we're going to output this new polygon feature class. So I put it in this Alaska MDB geodatabase container, and I named it Graticule 10 degrees, 10 degrees. So Graticule is basically fishnet in longitude and latitude. And then what we need to do is specify the origin. So let's specify our origin as negative 180 degrees and let's say 50 degrees north. And then we want our XY coordinate system go, to go straight up and down. So the Y axis coordinate will be identical in terms of its X coordinate. So 180 negative, and then anything north of 50 degrees. So I'll say um, 70 degrees north. So that just specifies our origin is at negative 180 degrees and the axis goes from 50 degrees straight up north to 70 degrees. Okay, so then we would specify each polygon is going to be 10 degrees wide, and each polygon is going to be 10 degrees high. Okay, and then we would specify the number of rows and the number of columns. So the number of rows will be three, will go from 50 to 60 degrees will be our first 10 degree row, from 60 to 70 degrees will be our next 10 degree row, and from 70 to 80 will be our next 10 degree row. And then the number of columns will have four. So we specify we start at negative 180, so the first column will be negative 180 to negative 170. The next column, column two, will be negative 70 to 160. And then from negative 160 to negative 150, and then negative 150 to negative 140. So that's a total of four columns. And we'll create polygons, and then just OK.
Okay, so here's our graticule of Alaska, um, basically polygons that are squares in terms of longitude and latitude. So each square is 10 degrees wide and 10 degrees high. And you'll notice the state of Alaska along the Canada border north of Wrangell St. Elias is going straight up and down. And that's because by treaty, this border is at negative 141 degrees longitude. So whenever we see Alaska displayed in geographic coordinates, this will always be straight up and down at negative 141 degrees. Okay, it turns out it's not quite that simple because the globe is not a perfect sphere. So we could approximate the globe as a sphere with radius of 6,370,997 meters, but it's not really a sphere because it's bulging around the equator due to centrifugal force. So it's actually a spheroid which bulges at the equator. Okay, so it turns out there's many different ways you can approximate the shape of the globe, and that's described in terms of something called the semi-major axis. So that would be what's the radius from the center of the Earth to the equator, called the semi-major axis, and then a semi-minor axis, which is shorter distance from the center of the Earth to the poles. So here's an example of a coordinate system that's geographic coordinates WGS 1984. Okay, so this is the geographic coordinate system that GPS is based on, and it assumes this semi-major or equatorial axis to have a distance of 6,378,137 meters. So from the center of the Earth to the equator is assumed to be this distance. And then from the center of the Earth to the poles is 6,356,752.3142 blah, blah, blah meters. So that's one approximation of the spheroid representing the globe. Another approximation that's very similar to this is the North American datum of 1983. So here it's a slightly different uh, spheroid, it actually has the same exact um, semi-major axis, so from the center of the Earth to the equator is exactly the same. The only thing that's different is this semi-minor axis, or the distance from the center of the Earth to the poles. There's a very, very slight difference between these two spheroids. Okay, the third geographic coordinate system you'll commonly see in Alaska, is, especially on USGS topo maps and older GIS data, is geographic coordinate system North America 1927. And that's based on an ancient representation of the globe in terms of its spheroid. So this is what it's assuming the distance from the center of the Earth to the equator is, and then this semi-minor axis is what it's assuming the distance from the center of the Earth to the poles is. Okay, so we have different spheroids, and associated with those, we have something called horizontal datums. And a horizontal datum is basically what is the spheroid or what's the assumed shape of the globe. For example, WGS84 for GPS system or NAD83 for um, GIS coordinates in North America. And then what's the orientation of zero point for the y-axis, which is generally the equator, and then where is the zero line for the x-axis, which would be the central meridian. In most cases, it's the prime meridian going from the North Pole through Greenwich, England to the South Pole. So here's a cartoon where I'm trying to portray what I'm talking about. Imagine these are both the same spheroids, and this would be the North American datum, where basically it's touching the globe much closer in North America than it is in other continents. And this would be a European datum, where the same spheroid is touching the globe much closer at the European area. Um, there could also be an Australian datum where it's touching the globe much closer near Australia. So typically for large continental areas, there's a specific datum used, and it's optimized so that spheroid is nearly touching the globe 
at that location. Okay, so here's a summary slide. Basically, we've got datums, and datums, one part of the datum is what spheroid is being used that basically gives the assumed shape of the globe. So if you're using the NAD 27, uh, the D North American datum of 1927, that's based on this ancient spheroid, the Clark 1866 spheroid. If you're using North American datum of 1983 compared to WGS 84, which is GPS, they have an identical semi-major axis, which would be from the center of the Earth to the equator but they have slightly different semi-minor axis, so from the center of the Earth to the poles. So there's very little difference between NAD83 and WGS84, but there's a big difference between these two and NAD27. Okay, so to demonstrate this, on the top of the Reichardt building, there's an antenna that's a GPS antenna, and that antenna location has been precisely surveyed, and it has this exact longitude and latitude. So what we could do is we'll make a point with that longitude and latitude in ArcGIS. Okay, so what we need to do is convert our latitude and longitude from degrees, minutes, and seconds into latitude and longitude in decimal degrees. And it's sort of analogous to time. There's 60 minutes in an hour. Well, there's 60 minutes in a degree. So if we take 51 divided by 60, that would convert that into decimal degrees. And then likewise, there's 3,600 seconds in an hour where there's 3,600 seconds in a degree. So if we take this, divide it by 3600, that would convert it into decimal degrees. We can do this in Excel. So just start Excel and you, we will have three columns. One will be what's the location. So the location is this SUAF uh, benchmark on top of Reichert building. And then we'll enter our longitude. So our longitude is always negative in Fairbanks because we're west of the prime meridian. So it's going to be negative 147 minus 50 divided by 60, 50 because we're west. So copy that and paste that. And then we'll copy seconds divided by 3600. So that's negative 147.8357 degrees. So negative 147.83, well if it was negative 147.75 that would be the same thing as negative 147 uh, degrees 45 minutes. So 0.83 should be greater than 45 minutes and it is, it's 50 minutes. And you do the same thing with latitude. It's 51 degrees or 64 degrees plus 51 minutes divided by 60 plus this many seconds divided by 3600. So that would give you this as your latitude. So do that, make an Excel spreadsheet, and then the next video session will compare this location using three different datums.